Following the cancellation of MWC 2020, I'm speaking remotely today with Sibel Tombas from Ericsson. And we're talking about something that would have been quite a feature, quite a highlight on the Ericsson stand in Barcelona, and that is Ericsson Spectrum Sharing. So, Sybil, can you just tell us what Ericsson Spectrum Sharing is and what it enables for mobile operators? So Ericsson Spectrum Sharing is for us a definitely technology breakthrough that enables operators to deploy 5G in a different way that has never been done before. So when we look at the mobile communication history, I think this is definitely the first time that we are sharing the spectrum between two different technologies in the millisecond level, which maximizes the efficiency of that spectrum, which is the most important thing for mobile industry because this is the most scarce resources. So what it means for mobile operators? So mobile operators now can deploy 5G nationwide coverage with much fewer sites in a very, very short time because they will be sharing the same spectrum between 4G and 5G and they will do it by using the same hardware, which means that they can now fully leverage all the in investments that they have done so far for deploying 4G and existing technologies and using the same hardware that they, they have been using. So for operators, it definitely means a cost-efficient introduction of 5G network-wide coverage, which is key to bring all these evolutions that come with 5G. So, Sybil, just to confirm, this means that operators can combine and couple the 5G spectrum they have with their existing 4G spectrum and use that combined capacity to provide services to their 4G and 5G customers? Yes, correct. So which means that when a 4G network is up and running with a site, with a radio and a baseband and a spectrum, with an ESS Ericsson Spectrum Sharing software, now the operator can use exactly the same spectrum. They can share it dynamically in millisecond level between 4G and 5G, serving both the 4G traffic and the 5G traffic simultaneously. And they can do it by utilizing the same hardware that they are running 4G today. And that, that is the, the, the efficiency and the, the maximum performance that coming from the same spectrum. Now for mobile operators, what, what kind of advantages does this bring? So of course, the first of all, uh, as, as I mentioned before, so it will enable them to provide nationwide coverage in using much fewer sites and a much faster way, which means that they will have the advantage to bring the 5G than compared to how they, if they use other spectrum. So they will basically get the lead in terms of providing the 5G in their network. But this will also enable for them to migrate to other technologies very fast. For example, standalone that we have been talking about, which is the true benefit of 5G, to provide lower latency, to enable different use cases, to get slicing benefit. And we believe that Exxon Spectrum Sharing is the key enabler for operators to migrate their networks to standalone and invest for these new capabilities to serve these new, new use cases and this cannot be done before you have a wide area coverage that are provided by Ericsson Spectrum Sharing. And what about the operator's customers? What does it mean for them? Of course, that is also a different way. So we also believe that Ericsson Spectrum Sharing will transform the end user experience. And I can give you three key benefits for end users that Ericsson Spectrum Sharing will bring. First of all, Ericsson Spectrum Sharing will provide wide area coverage with a software upgrade, which means that now the end users can access to 5G coverage everywhere uh, and, and can access all these advanced use cases with 5G in every part of the network. Second, Exxon Spectrum Sharing will enable the migration to standalone. With standalone, the users will provide to get much lower latency and faster access to large part of the spectrum and high data rates. And the third benefit with Exxon Spectrum Sharing with end users will be that when we merge Exxon Spectrum Sharing with Carrigation, then the end users will get much higher peak rates in much larger part of the network to get these high speeds and high performance. So we're talking here about Ericsson Spectrum Sharing, but there's also something in the market called Dynamic Spectrum Sharing. Are these things the same? So they are different, and I will explain, maybe just starting looking back to a bit past how this concept has started. So we have started working on Exxon Spectrum Sharing concept already in 2017. And we have let the ecosystem to drive the standards in 3GBP for dynamic spectrum sharing. Because we believe that global standards are key to be able to scale any innovation 
to all our customers for any geographical location. And when we do this dynamic spectrum sharing standard in 3GBP, we provide a common language between network and the device. And that language needs to be universal and it should be valid in US, it should be valid in China, and it should be valid in Europe. But the dynamic spectrum sharing 3GBP defined solution doesn't specify how you do the spectrum sharing. It doesn't explain and, and enable how you dynamically allocate the spectrum uh, between 4G and 5G uh, bands in the, same, in, in the same band. So because all the technologies in 3GBP, scheduling and coordination has always been vendor specific because they are transparent to the device. So Ericsson spectrum sharing as a result give two different, two key innovations that is co compared to dynamic spectrum sharing. First is that we have an advanced technology in our hardware. With the, the technology advantage in our hardware, which we can run multi-standard radio and multi-standard baseband, which means that with the high processing capability, we can squeeze two different generations running in the same hardware. The second benefit of Ericsson Spectrum Sharing is that by utilizing this hardware advantage, we can do instant coordination between 4G and 5G, which means that we can now schedule and 4G and 5G devices and share the spectrum in millisecond level. And this is the true benefit of Ericsson Spectrum Sharing, which provides the highest spectral efficiency and maximum capacity from that spectrum. For mobile operators, do they need to wait until they're deploying 5G to take advantage of this? Uh, no. I mean, Ericsson Spectrum Sharing is one of the tools that you, you use to get the 5G to your market. So, which means that you can use Ericsson Spectrum Sharing, which is commercially available today, and they can choose any of the FTD bands that they are running LT today. And with a software upgrade, they can provide 5G coverage using their existing spectrum and hardware without any further need. From an operator perspective, is this a relatively simple migration for operators that already have Ericsson hardware deployed? Yes, correct. So we have more than 5 million radios today that are 5G capable. And for all those operators that are using this 5 million radios today, the only thing that they need is the, the software. And the moment they load the software in their network, they will be running Ericsson Spectrum Sharing in their LTE bands and activate 5G instantly. And do you sense that there's support for this from the operator community? Do you expect mobile operators to be deploying this in the coming year? No, definitely. I mean, the, the, the interest from mobile operators has been tremendous on this since we have started working on this in 2017. So our solution is commercially available today since February. And uh, we expect that most of our operators will be using the spectrum and using the solution in the next 12 months and launching in their networks to enable nationwide coverage. Well, all mobile operators are looking to make the best use of their resources and, and capabilities. So I can only imagine we're going to hear a lot more about this in the coming year. So Sybil, thanks very much for talking to us today. Thank you very much.